Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Spring Picture Books. I'm Julia Smith, a senior editor of the Books for Youth section at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. Links to today's slide presentation and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download the slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Last but not least, Booklist offers closed captioning on all webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the live transcript icon on the toolbar mentioned earlier. From there, you can select show or hide subtitles from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Michelle Leo, Vice President and Director of Education and Library Marketing at Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing, Donna Spurlock, Marketing Director, Charles Bridge Publishing, Colette Perry, Marketing Associate, Charles Bridge Publishing, Mary Van Aken, Director of School and Library Marketing, Macmillan Children's Publishing Group, and with her, we have Angela Joy, author of Choosing Brave, and Janelle Washington, illustrator of Choosing Brave. And then we also will be hearing from Sarah Merritt, Senior Director of Marketing at Zonder Kids, and Allison McLaughlin, Marketing Manager of Owl Kids. First, we'll hear from Michelle Leo. As just mentioned, Michelle is the Vice President and Director of Education and Library Marketing at Simon & Schuster. She is the daughter of two librarians and spent a lot of her childhood in libraries. A graduate of Fordham University, she spent a year in France teaching English to French high school students before beginning her career at Simon & Schuster, where she's worked for 23 years. Thanks for being here today, Michelle. Thank you so much. The pleasure is mine. So I'm going to start with our starred reviews. Please, next slide. Five starred reviews for Mina by Matthew Forsyth. Bookless Raves, it is a marvelous mouse-sized mischief for all ages. From the creator of the acclaimed and beloved Poco and the Drum comes an emotionally resonant picture book about trust, worry, and loyalty between a father and daughter. Mardi Gras Almost Didn't Come This Year by Kathy Z. Price and debut illustrator Carl Joe Williams has three starred reviews. A family finds hope and healing in a Mardi Gras celebration after Hurricane Katrina changed their world. Next slide, please. Now on to spring highlights. The Great Zapfino by Mac Barnett, illustrated by Caldcott winner Marla Frazee. From two best-selling and beloved creators comes a sweet and inspiring story about a runaway circus performer who learns to face his fears and follow his heart. Ten Hungry Rabbits by Anita Lobel. From Caldcott honor-winning creator Lobel comes a mouth-watering picture book about 10 hungry rabbits who find 10 yummy vegetables for mama rabbit's soup while teaching colors and counting along the way. Perfectly Pegasus by Jesse Sima. A lonely Pegasus looks for the perfect friend in this adorable companion to the best-selling Not Quite Narwhal. The Library Fish by Alyssa Satin Capusili, illustrated by Gladys Jose is a delightful romp through the library, celebrating all it has to offer. Join the public library's mascot fish as she explores the stacks, snuggles up with a good book in the reading corner, has numerous adventures courtesy of the stories she reads, and of course, welcomes visitors. Next slide, please. Founded in 2016, Salam Reads is an imprint that celebrates joy, vibrancy, 
and variety in stories of Muslim life. Abdul's story by Jamila Tompkins Bigelow, illustrated by Tiffany Rose, is about a little boy who loves storytelling but struggles with writing and learns that it's okay to make mistakes in this charming and encouraging book from the author of Mommy's Kamar. The Katha Chess by Radia Chudhuri, illustrated by Lavanya Naidu, is a beautifully woven tale about the bonds of love, culture, and memory. And it follows a young girl learning about her family history through her grandmother's Katha chest, a big old chest filled with quilts that tell the stories of the women in her family. Next slide, please. Deneen Milner Books is a love letter to children of color who deserve to see their beauty and humanity in the most remarkable form of entertainment on the planet, books. These stories celebrate the everyday beauty of being a little human of color. Impossible Moon by Brianna J. McDaniel, illustrated by Tanya Engel. A young girl undertakes an impossible trip to the moon, makes friends with the stars, and brings back something priceless in this gentle and lyrically told picture book about family, history, and memory. Stella Keeps the Sun Up by Clotilde Ewing, illustrated by Lynn Gaines. In this incandescently fun, hijinks filled book, a young girl schemes to keep the sun up in the sky so she never has to go to bed. Clotilde will be at Public Library Association if you plan to attend. Bold Words from Black Women by Tamara Pazzoli, illustrated by Monica Ahanonu, celebrate the power of Black womanhood in this first of its kind collection of inspirational quotes from 50 activists, artists, and leaders featuring bold attention-grabbing illustrations perfect for readers of her story and little leaders. Next slide, please. On to some of our nonfiction coming this year. Growing an artist from award-winning artist John Para comes a touching and deceptively simple picture book based on his childhood experience. His father was an, um, a landscaping artist and the bond between a father and son, hard work and the links between nature, art and creativity. We also have a Spanish edition available. My very first 100 words by Rosemary Wells, the parts of speech, numbers, colors, actions, animal sounds, greetings, and descriptions of time in this book have been carefully selected as a foundation for babies and toddlers to begin understanding the words they've show they're showered with daily. Harriet's Ruffled Feathers by Joy McCullough, illustrated by Romino Galata, Meet the inspiring woman whose love of fashion led her to start a conservation movement and found the Massachusetts Audubon Society in this lively picture book biography. Alice Waters Cooks Up a Revolution by Diane Stanley, illustrated by Jesse Hartland. From the team behind the acclaimed Ada Lovelace, Poet of Science, comes a delicious book biography about pioneering chef Alice Waters, who kickstarted the organic food movement. Happy Sloth Day by April Polisair. With gorgeous photographs, a text that's perfect for reading aloud, info pack sidebars, and detailed end matter, this book will captivate sloth enthusiasts of all ages. My daughter cannot wait for this book. She loves sloth. Moving Forward by Chris Barton, illustrated by Steffi Wassel. Meet activist Alton Yates, an Air Force veteran who dedicated his life to propelling America forward from space travel to the civil rights movement and beyond, based on the author's extensive interviews with Alton himself. Action by Megan McCarthy. In her trademark easy to follow narrative voice, this fact-filled picture book tells the story of the evolution of movies and the people who worked hard to create them, both on screen and behind the scenes. Next slide, please. Introducing a brand new format called Storytime Together. Chicka Chicka Boom Boom and Click Clack Moo are beloved classics, but now available in a Storytime Together edition, which is designed so the book can be folded in half and easily read aloud to an audience. The text will face the reader and the illustrations will face the audience. The spiral bound book also comes with a cardstock jacket for convenient shelving and storage. Next slide, please. New this summer, I have eight books to talk about quickly. 
Creepy Cran by Aaron Reynolds, illustrated by Peter Brown. This is from the team behind Creepy Carrots and Creepy Pair of Underwear. It's the third in a hilariously spooky series about a young rabbit and his peculiar encounters, this time featuring a sinister crayon. Wondering Around by Meg Fleming, illustrated by Richard Jones. What do you wonder when you wander outside? This lyrical picture book reveals the creativity and curiosity that comes from exploring the outdoors. Noodle and the No Bones Day by Jonathan Graziano, illustrated by Dan Tavis. Perhaps you are fans of the viral Bones or No Bones TikTok videos. The creator has created this sweet and entertaining picture book following Noodle the Pug and his human as they navigate Noodle's first No Bones Day, a day for being kind to yourself. Lizzie and the Cloud by Terry and Eric Fan from the critically acclaimed award-winning creators of Ocean Meets Sky and The Night Gardener comes a whimsical and sweet tale of a young girl who cares for her pet cloud as it grows. I love my body because all are welcome meets beautifully me in this gentle poetic book about celebrating your body and all the different wonderful bodies that make up our world. If your babysitter is a bruja, on the night before Halloween, a new babysitter might be more than she appears. This bouncy bilingual picture book is an enchanting, rollicking read aloud for small ones with big imaginations. It will also be available in a Spanish edition. Amy Wu and the warm welcome. Amy Wu does her best to make her new classmate from China feel welcome in this warm hearted and playfully illustrated follow up picture book to Amy Wu and the perfect bow and Amy Wu and the patchwork dragon. And coming this fall, next slide please. On her wings, discover the early life and legacy of groundbreaking American writer, Toni Morrison in this beautifully illustrated nonfiction picture book biography written by Jardine Nolan, illustrated by James E. Ransom. Hello Moon, a parent and child explore the wonder and joys of the changing moon together in this captivating picture book from award-winning author, illustrator, Evan Turk. A Sweet New Year for Wren by Michelle Sterling. Celebrate the Lunar New Year through a young girl's family traditions in this charming picture book featuring illustrations by New York Times bestselling artist, Dung Ho, that also includes a recipe for pineapple cakes. And finally, the talk by Alicia D. Williams, illustrated by Brianna Mikodoru Uchendu. All black and brown kids get the talk, the talk that could mean the difference between life and death in a racist world. Told in an age appropriate fashion with a perfect pause for parents to insert their own discussions with their children to accompany prompting illustrations. Next slide. These are just our, a reminder of our resources found on our website and the book pantry. And I thank you so much for listening today. Thank you so much. Next, we will be hearing from Donna and Colette. Um, Donna Spurlock is the marketing director at Charles Bridge. She loves fiction, but is always excited by Charles Bridge's nonfiction picture books and the amazing true stories that their authors uncover. Colette is a marketing associate at Charles Bridge. She was born and raised in Portland, Oregon, and holds a bachelor's degree in communications and music from Simmons University. Colette lives in Boston with three friends and a very spoiled leopard gecko. Take it away, Donna and Colette. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. This is Donna at Charles Bridge, and I'm joined with my colleague, Colette, um, to share with you some new and upcoming picture books on our 22 list. First up, let's kick off with the newest title in our acclaimed storytelling math series, Again, Essie, by Jenny Lasica. This is a playful, problem-solving adventure set in a Ch 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 Chicanx household. Raphael just wants to play with his toys in peace, but his little sister Essie keeps barging in and knocking everything over. No matter where he hides, Essie always finds him. Determined, Raphael gathers boxes from all over the house. He tries different orientations and configurations using his spatial reasoning to build a muro, a wall big enough to keep Essie out of his business. But as she knocks down wall after wall, 
Raphael begins to realize that there's another solution. Again, Essie is a brilliant example of what the storytelling math series does best, using mathematical thinking together with empathy to solve relatable problems which children of all backgrounds encounter in their daily lives. In addition to the brand new title, Again Essie, we are adding Spanish-English bilingual editions of the earlier releases of Storytelling Math. Making titles like Graceland's board books and the picture books available for Spanish speakers, ESL, and kids learning Spanish will open this amazing series up to more readers. Developed in collaboration with math experts at STEM education nonprofit Turk under a grant from the Heising Simons Foundation, Storytelling Math celebrates children using math in their daily adventures as they play, build, and discover the world around them. In Graceland's series of board books, a cast of four friends learn about spheres as they blow bubbles in Circulo Esfera, Circle Sphere. Friends Olivia and May figure out fractions as they strive to share in El Ultimo Malvavisco, The Last Marshmallow. Then May learns about measurement as she takes care of her growing sunflower in Hasta las Rodillas, Up to My Knees. And in Que Genera la Canasta, What Will Fit, Olivia learns about spatial sense as she tries to find just the right thing to fit in her basket at the farmer's market. The launch list of storytelling math picture books is also available in bilingual editions. Lia y Luis, Quien Tiene Más, Lia and Luis Who Has More by Ana Crespo, follows Brazilian American siblings as they compete to have the better snack. It's a playful exploration of measurement, counting, and estimation, and an introduction to some favorite Brazilian foods that includes Portuguese words throughout. In Los Animales No Se Dormian, The Animals Would Not Sleep by Sarah Levine, Marco explores sorting and classifying as he tries to put his stuffed animals to bed in a way that will make them all happy. It's a delightful story of a scientifically minded young boy, his rambunctious stuffies, and how math can help at bedtime. In Natasha Yim's Luna Isurikissimo Dim Sum, Luna's Yum Yum Dim Sum, it's Luna's birthday dinner at her favorite Chinese restaurant. But she and her two brothers have trouble dividing five pork buns fairly. They have a lot of ideas, and with a little math and a lot of kindness, Luna figures it out just right. And also available is Bracelets for Bina's Brothers, Usha and the Big Digger, and Nia Lisi, Look Grandma. You'll adore Madeline Goodnight's glowing art in this next title, Pow Wow Day, by award-winning Cherokee author Tracy Sorrell. This stunner, to quote the starred review from Kirkus Reviews, is a heartwarming picture book about the roles of courage, culture, and community in the journey of personal healing. It's Pow Wow Day, but this year is different. River can't dance, not like she could before she got sick. As she struggles with the physical symptoms of a serious lingering illness, she also struggles with feelings of frustration and isolation. Can she dance grand entry? No. Can she join the intertribal dance? Also no. Can she at least dance the jingle dress dance? No, she can't, even though she needs the healing dance now more than ever. Every time she tries and falters, her big sister and her parents are there to catch her. As she watches her sister, her cousins, and her friends, she realizes that they're not dancing for the judges. They're dancing to pray for everyone's health, including Rivers. She may not be ready today, but she will dance again. Pow Wow Day is a gorgeous tribute from the author of We Are Grateful, Ochali Haliga, and We Are Still Here, Native American Truths Everyone Should Know. Next is Emma Bland Smith's picture book biography of Elliot Michener, The Gardener of Alcatraz. It's a beautiful portrait of the redemptive power of meaningful work. Elliot Michener was a criminal. He was sent to Leavenworth, but was transferred to the dreaded Alcatraz prison in 1941. He was determined to bust out. But in a move that Emma wittily surmises was just a ploy, Elliot was honored with a bit of trust and the job of restoring the gardens of Alcatraz. Elliot had no gardening experience, but it was a chance to get outside and to have a little independence, and possibly a way to escape. But day after day, Elliot worked hard digging and planting and bringing the gardens back to life. He went to bed with a good tired. He read up on plants and gardening. He was hooked. Soon the thoughts of escape escaped him. He was proud of the work he did. He was even promoted to working in the warden's house and became good friends with the warden's wife, sharing a love of roses. 
Jen Ely's illustrations have a bit of quirk and a bit of fun and are full of bright colors and a lot of style, like Elliot's garden. Elliot Michener's story shows us the importance and the grace of finding your passion and working at it wholeheartedly. Next is Diving Deep, Using Machines to Explore the Ocean by Michelle Cusolito with illustrations by Nicole Wong. This is a companion to Michelle and Nicole's Flying Deep, Climb Inside Deep Sea Submersible Alvin. Michelle has worked closely with the scientists at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, including going out on an expedition to research this book and talk to them about the work they do. As Michelle writes, we're wired for wonder. We delight in discovery. In this book, we go depth by depth and learn the level of expertise required in the equipment needed to explore. You and I can snorkel at the surface and see loads of amazing plants and animals that thrive underwater. It's easy if you can swim, and all you need is a mask and a breathing tube. But then there's deep sea submersibles that can reach depths of more than 21,000 feet. That's deep. It's dark down there. And there are creatures you would not believe. But that's not even the deepest. Challenger Deep is the deepest place on Earth at 6.8 miles. That's literally a crushing depth. But why do we do this? Well, because not long ago, a new species of shark was discovered. Today, researchers are exploring a lush landscape deep below Antarctic ice. And tomorrow, today's young readers may unlock more secrets to life on Earth. Back matter includes a glossary, a bibliography, an author's note, and an incredible spread illustrating the levels of depths and the equipment used to get there. The dream team behind You're Invited to a Mothball is back with another brilliantly photo-illustrated adventure in insect life, Honeybee Rescue, a backyard drama. Mr. Connery's got a problem. There are bees in his garage. Now, bees are a good thing. They pollinate plants, keep the ecosystem healthy, and make delicious honey. But bees in a garage? Not so great. For the safety of everyone, insect and human, these bees have to move. That's where Mr. Nelson comes in. He's a beekeeper who specializes in rescues, relocating hives that have moved into people's homes and businesses without killing the bees. Lori Griffin Burns walks us through the process, explaining critical honeybee science along the way with the aid of Ellen Harasimovich's captivating photographs. Young gardeners and future scientists will be abuzz about honeybee rescue's thrilling insight into a beekeeper's adventures. And lastly, The Incredible Shrinking Lunchroom by Michelle Babe. This modern retelling of the classic Yiddish folktale asks, what do you do when the school lunchroom gets too crowded? because the students at Parley Elementary were having a hard time managing their noisy, crowded lunchroom. So they wrote a letter to their wise principal asking for help. Ms. Mensch knew just what to do. She announced that the science fair projects be displayed on tables throughout the lunchroom. It didn't really help the problem. Ms. Mensch didn't give up. She decided to set up a learning zoo, moving all classroom pets into the lunchroom. Then she moved sports practice into the lunchroom. Things just got worse. Things can always get worse. Just when the students were at the tipping point, Ms. Mensch ended the learning zoo, the science fair, the sports practice, and the lunchroom became solely dedicated to lunch once more. The students were relieved to have so much room and so much quiet. This is a laugh out loud, funny look at appreciating the good that you've got. As Michelle says in her closing author's note, when I was growing up, my parents encouraged me to both reach for the stars and be grateful for what we have. They taught us that gratitude and a positive perspective would see, it, see us through difficult life situations, because no matter how hard it felt in the moment, things could always be worse. Thanks, everyone. That's it for Charles Bridge. Please visit us at charlesbridge.com slash picture books for, for downloadable galleys of some of these books and, and downloadables uh, to go with them. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you so much, Donna and Colette. We'll now hear from Mary Van Aken, Director of School and Library Marketing at Macmillan Children's Publishing Group. Take it away, Mary. Hello, everyone. Um, shortly, I will introduce you to our special guests, Angela Joy and Janelle Washington. Uh, but first, I want to introduce a few picture book highlights from our spring list. You can watch our full spring preview at bit.ly slash mcpgspring22 
and visit us online at MacKidsSchoolAndLibrary.com for activity kits, discussion guides, story time videos, and more. Before I dive in, I wanted to give a quick shout out to some of our top reviewed picture books so far this year, including I Am Golden by Eva Chen, illustrated by Sophie Diao, Love Violet by Charlotte Sullivan Wilde, illustrated by Charlene Shua, The Legend of Gravity by Charlie Palmer, and That's Betty by, Be by Gregory Bonsignore, illustrated by Jennifer Potter. First up on my list to preview for you today is School is Wherever I Am by Ellie Peterson. Ellie has been teaching for 20 years, and when the pandemic closed her school district last spring, seeing the empty hallways and having her classroom confined to a computer screen was incredibly disheartening for Ellie and her students. However, it wasn't long before her students shared experiences that they were having outside the classroom, stories they were writing, recipes they had made, board games they discovered, birds they'd never seen before in their own backyards. They were inspiring Ellie and each other, and together they realized that learning happens wherever you have an open mind and that school can truly be wherever you are. This book is an ode to that experience. My next book is The Whale Who Swam Through Time by Alex Borsma and Nick Pennison. This sweeping nonfiction picture book explores the 200 year lifespan of a bowhead whale, the changing environment that surrounds her and the role humans have played in their changing ecosystem. With gorgeous, detailed, and striking illustrations, this well-researched and thoughtfully curated nonfiction story captures the magic and beauty of the natural world, while also providing a thoughtful account of how humans have impacted our changing ecosystems and a call to action for protecting our environment. Next up is See You Someday Soon by Pat Zietlow Miller and illustrated by Susie Lee. In this heartfelt picture book, a child imagines the ways to connect with a grandmother who lives far away. Whether by rocket ship or jetpack, train or by plane, any journey is worth it to see someone you love. Susie has brilliantly used die cuts to add an additional layer of meaning to the book through her spare yet um, emotive art and accent the distance between the main characters and make their ultimate reunion feel delightfully satisfying. The message of this story will resonate, especially with anyone who's been separated for very long distances over the course of the pandemic, but is simply also simply a universal story for families living far apart, including immigrant families. Tomatoes in My Lunchbox by Costancia Manoli, illustrated by Magdalena Mora. Tomatoes in My Lunchbox is a real favorite of ours here at Mac Kids, and it's a moving picture book from a debut author about the first day of school layered with themes about the immigrant experience and the universal feeling of feeling just out of place. A child newly arrived in another country feels displaced, lonely, and a little bit scared on her first day of school. Her name doesn't sound the way she's used to hearing it. She knows she doesn't fit in. And when she eats her whole tomato for lunch, she can feel her classmates staring at her and not quite understanding her. She feels what it means to be different and decides she wants a name like the other girls have, Emma, Chloe, or Olivia. But sometimes all it takes to feel accepted is one friend to bring two worlds together and gradually the girl, the tomato, and her full name start to feel more at home with her friends and community. I'm excited to share our first collaboration with Encantos, an award-winning edtech company and a Roaring Brook publishing partner. Macmillan is distributing their entire cat uh, their whole catalog under the Encantos name, but under Roaring Brook, we've picked some of their characters and have developed whole series around them, starting with Skeletina and the In-Between World. Infused with themes and characters inspired by El Dia de los Muertos, aka the School of the Dead, uh, the Day of the Dead, and Mexican folklore, this book is a joyful introduction to an empathetic and kind main character who guides children in the in-between world, a ghostly space where they can enter while asleep. It's where they can overcome fears through friends like floods who help children learn to swim. It's also a space where children can reconnect with loved ones who've passed on. Through hit movies like Coco and the Book of Life, an awareness of the Day of the Dead is widespread, and Skeletina is ready to keep that riding that wave. We're planning on publishing a second Skeletina book in spring 2023. And with that, I'm very excited to introduce Angela Joy and Janelle Washington. You can please both join me on screen. 
Um, they are the author and illustrator of Choosing Brave, how Mamie Till Mobley and Emmett Till sparked the civil rights movement. This picture book biography of the mother of Emmett Till and how she channeled grief over her son's death into a call to action for the civil rights movement is one of our most anticipated picture books of 2022. Uh, welcome Janelle and Angela. Um, we're so excited to have you here today. And I'm hoping you can start by sharing with us a little bit about your inspiration um, for writing a biography of Mamie Till Mo Mobley. So let's start with you, Angela. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. It's morning where I am in California. Um, so when looking at choosing Brave and the story of Mamie Till Mobley, the history actually goes back a little further for me um, than the three years it's taken to actually write the book. In 2016, I was taken with the death of Trayvon Martin along with the rest of the country. Um, but I was also extremely moved by the action that his mother took in speaking out and representing her family, representing her community. Um, as a young mother, I felt her pain intensely and it changed the way that I mother my son. Uh, fast forward to three years ago when I heard a podcast about Mamie Till Mobley, um, I felt that same pain, that same angst, and it occurred to me that this woman, uh, Mamie Till Mobley, was the original mother of the, um, the movement, the original mother who spoke out uh, for her son for justice. And so I felt really inspired to dig deeper into her story and tell it to um, young people, also to represent women of the civil rights movement, which I think is something we're doing more in, in literature and media in general um, these days. So tell me, Janelle, uh, what inspired you to take this very difficult project on? Uh, well, thank you for having me. Um, I decided to take this project on because I too am really connected to the story. I remember uh, learning about it in school and just um, how passionate uh, Mamie was to really get Emmett's um, story out there and let people know what was going on. Um, and I knew that this would be uh, a good story to tell and, and illustrate. And so I wanted to uh, contribute to it. Well, I contribute, you did. I mean, I, I don't know if everyone knows out there, but you have created a paper cut illustration for this book, something that I had never seen before. Um, and a lot of people haven't heard of. When I say our illustrations are paper cut art, they're like, what is it? And then when they see a picture, a little snippet of it, they're like, oh my gosh, how did she do that? So let me ask you, how, how do you do this? What is the process to get paper cuts into a beautiful illustration like this? Well, like, uh, it starts off, I guess, with most illustrators, you do your sketches and you really have to think about how things connect. All the paper has to have some sort of connection to each other or everything falls apart. Um, so I had to really think about how the design is going to work, how are these pieces with the negative and positive spaces are going to show and what is going to be uh, have the greatest impact. Um, so sketching and then also just thinking about what comes out and what stays. Um, and then once we, we kind of finalize what were good sketches, then, you know, drawing them bigger and then cutting them out of one sheet of paper. So everything is hand cut out of one sheet of black paper, and then the color is added with tissue paper underneath it. Hmm. Just beautiful, incredible. I love this picture because you can actually see the inter inter intricate yeah. <laughs> cutouts of the people, which I, I can't even, it's mind blowing. How long does that take? <laughs> that was a very hard to do, yes. Yeah. I try not to keep up with how long it is, but it, it takes hours to do it um, and, and to put and then to add the color and make sure it fits in those little small spaces. Um, so it's very time consuming and you have to have a lot of patience, which I do. So uh, paper cutting is a great medium for me. It's beautiful. That dress is incredible. Thank you. Wow. Beautiful. And Angela, with just yes. about a minute left to our time, I was hoping you could also share, you know, this is, this is a, a topic that is so important to share at this young audience. Um, what recommendations would you give to librarians who are sharing this book uh, with their students? Um, how, how, you know, obviously you're not you're not a librarian yourself, of course, but um, any any words of advice for share, for conversations around this book? Um, my first word of advice is always to read and share together a book that's this uh, intense because there are a lot of questions. I heard someone else mention earlier, taking time, taking a pause to address a certain issue. Um, so I love those pauses for talking and discussion. Uh, this book is really about Mamie and it does not focus as much on the violence that surrounds Emmett's 
story. Um, but we have instead focused on Mamie and the hero that she was throughout her life. And it's an inspirational story so that we can all choose brave when we're faced with adversity like Miss Mamie Till Mobley. It's a contemporary uh, book story because now we have a lot in the media about um, other individuals, unfortunately, who have died by gun or police violence. And so it's in the air. I love addressing things that are all already in the air in our conversations in the news so that children have something positive to grasp onto and understand. Um, and picture books are a great way to uh, do that, to address those things with young people. So this is a great one for those serious conversations that are often hard to have. Um, it's a great aid. And obviously, again, the pictures are outstanding. So just for art lessons, they're a great jumping off point. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I'm so excited for everyone to get to know Choosing Brave this August. Um, but a review copy is in your title notes. And that is our time today. So Angela and Janelle, thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's been a real delight. And I can't wait to share this story and artwork with everyone. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Mary, Angela, and Janelle. Now we'll hear from Sarah Merritt. Sarah is the Senior Director of Marketing for Zonder Kids, the children's division of Zondervan and Blink, a YA imprint. She sets a strategy and executes the marketing plans for books targeting ages zero through 18. She most enjoys working alongside authors and finding new ways to reach young readers. Take it away, Sarah. Thanks, Julia, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm eager to present our spring and summer picture book releases to you today, and I look forward to hearing your feedback as well. Uh, just to note, everything I talked through today has additional information on Edelweiss, and we have some activity and teaching guides available as noted on each page um, with each book. You can get to them at the link here next to the star. Let's get started. The first book I want to introduce you to you today is This Farm as a Family. Uh, we know kids love stories about animals on the farm, and this title is sure to be a hit with families. This Farm as a Family is a picture book from Dan McKernan of Barn Sanctuary and illustrator D Denise Hughes. Barn Sanctuary rescues farmed animals from cases of abuse and neglect, giving these animals the highest possible quality of life with top medical care and enriched li living environments. They work to show farmed animals in a new light, sharing how each animal is unique and valued. Barn Sanctuary reaches over 700,000 people on social media platforms and has, their, has had their own show, Saved by the Farm on Animal Planet, which I highly recommend. You will laugh and fall in love with this beautiful farm family that's been created. In this book, uh, Buttercup the cow is a new rescue animal coming to Barn Sanctuary and all of the animals are excited to welcome her. When it becomes clear that Buttercup is scared and upset with her new surroundings, the animals do their best to win her heart and show how wonderful it is to be a member of this new family. Farmer Dan McKernan has an infectious personality and loves what he does. He's currently scheduling events with libraries in and around Michigan and is willing to do virtual events too. Um, if this is of interest to you, please do reach out directly and also be sure to check out the curriculum and activity kit for this book. They turned out absolutely adorable and my kids are already having fun working through them. Um, lots of farm animal themed uh, fun for kids. This last slide here um, that's showing right now is the final uh, image in the book and it tells just a little bit more about the real life barn sanctuary and some of the rescue animals uh, that they have on the farm. This next book is A Prayer for Our Country. This is from Senate Chaplain Barry Black. Um, on January 7th at 2020 at 3.41 a.m., hours after the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, Senate Chaplain Barry Black delivered a prayer. It was very short. He prayed for the loss of life and the dysfunction threatening our democracy. He prayed for guidance and to see each other in a common humanity. In the following week, Chaplain Black's prayer went viral and quickly became a beacon of light in a chaotic time. I think this book is just a a breath of fresh air, words to unite and inspire hope. 
Chaplain Black has written a new prayer for this book, um, one that is full of gratitude for all of the blessings that come from with living in this country and still acknowledges the very real pain and suffering of many of our citizens. It offers a, a vision for the future where people of all different races and abilities are unified. Chaplain Black's strong words are accompanied by art uh, from Kim Holt. She's an up and coming illustrator and her art is absolutely gorgeous as you can see here on the screen. And she just completely captured Chaplain Black's vision of empathy and empowerment and just brings so much joy to this book. She truly makes the words sing through the art. With Chaplain Black's authority and Kim Holt's talent, there's nothing but potential for this truly inspirational book. This is the only book um, on my list today that I'm, that I'm talking about that mentions God, but it's universal in its message of unity and hope. The next book is quite a shift from the previous one. It is one that all of us book lovers can definitely relate to, and it is one of my personal favorites. Literary Critters is the most playful, inventive introduction to classic literary figures that I have seen. It's full of playful animal characters that introduce children to iconic literary figures while appealing to those that are already familiar with these iconic authors and easily get the connection to the characters such as William Shakespeare, Beatrix Trotter, Edgar Tallon Crowe, Crane Austin, Langston Muse, and many more. This book is created by Sophie Corrigan. So if you're fan, a fan of any of her Pugtato books or her Etsy store, you um, have grown to love her wit and humor. This book starts off with an in invitation and dedication page uh, for the child to join the Literary Critters Guild, followed by a letter for the reader from William Shakespeare himself, as he embarks upon a journey for inspiration, unsure of what to write about next. This uh, slide that you see here, we follow along with William Shakespeare as he seeks out advice from his literary critter friends, such as Mole Dahl, and we get a sense of each character's own literary senses. Here we see Mole Dahl encouraging William Shakespeare to use his imagination to make his writing outrageously fantastical. A little magic can take you a long way, he says. And on the next slide, slide, you'll see another example, Crane Austin, who tells William Shakespeare that the best stories are based on relationships. Though Shakespeare is ultimately not convinced of this, and after a series of interactions with other friends of iconic nature, as well as a long hibernation, followed by fierce writing upon awakening, he lands upon a work that will sound very familiar to many of us, a winter long dream. William Shakespeare ends our book with another letter to the reader, encouraging them to seek out their own inspiration and asking, what will you be reading or writing about next? This is a book that promotes the power of imagination as well as reading and writing and will appeal to children and adults alike, making it a, a key title for us for this summer. Like I mentioned, the art in text is created by Sophie Corrigan, author and illustrator of the Pugtato series, which Kirkus Reviews has called ridiculously appealing. And finally, I'm thrilled to tell you about the newest book in the Fiona the Hippo series, Fiona Love at the Zoo. This book series is done in cooperation with the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens and is based on the real life Fiona the Hippo who was born prematurely and became an internet se sensation as she grew stronger from her start as a preemie at 29 pounds. Fiona Love at the Zoo is an all new picture book in the series that reminds readers how love makes the world a beautiful place. In this story, we join Fiona and her mama, Bibi, as Fiona learns just how special love is and how different animals around the zoo show their love for one another in different ways. Monkeys show their love by sharing lunch, swans show their love through water dances, seals show their love by booping noses, and so much more. Children will love seeing how the animals interact and recreating some of the playful, silly ways with their parents or loved ones reading the book to them. The cover and illustrations from New York Times bestselling auth illustrator Richard Cowdery once again give readers so much to look at while reading the story. This picture book, all of these picture books in this series are great for read aloud and we have activity sheets available. That's my list for the day. I hope you enjoyed hearing about these new books. Please feel free to reach out directly to me to learn more about these or to receive a sample and be sure to check out all of these titles at Edelweiss um, or NetGalley and be sure to check out the freebies at the link here. Thanks for listening today. Thank you, Sarah.
Our final presenter today will be Allison McLaughlin. Allison is the marketing manager at Owl Kids Books in Toronto, Canada, where she works with a wonderful team to spread the word about great books. She has spent 10 years in children's publishing, where she feels lucky to work with children's books and picture books every day. Thanks for joining us, Allison. The floor is yours. Thank you, Julia, and hi, everyone. If you don't know us, Owl Kids Books is an independent publisher of award-winning books for children. We are based in Toronto, Canada, and we are distributed in the United States by Publishers Group West. Today, it is my pleasure to show you some new picture books for spring, and thank you for sticking around. I promise these last 10 minutes or so will be worth it. So let's get started with The Tunnel. This is by Sarah Howden, illustrated by Erica Rodriguez Medina. This is about a boy who's coping with his emotions after something bad happens at home. It's purposely never defined exactly what the bad thing is, so this could apply to a variety of different experiences. The boy doesn't wanna talk about his feelings, so he decides to dig a tunnel from his bedroom deep down into the backyard. We see his journey as he travels down deeper and darker. I really love how the art here shows his mood with the dark tones and the pops of red. And eventually he notices the light and the love of his family and he feels ready to come back again. When he does return, there's just a tiny twig in his hair. So was his journey imagined, just a metaphor, or was it real? Either way, his mom gently notices the twig and acknowledges that he came back. She's there to support him. It's a really striking, strong book about facing something tough and taking the time and the space that you need to process emotions in your own way, which I think is especially notable with a boy character. Moving on, A Park Connects Us by Sarah Nelson, illustrated by Ellen Rooney. This is a celebration of urban parks. Uh, and we just learned this book is actually especially timely in 2022 because this year marks the bicentennial of the birth of Frederick Law Olmsted who was a social reformer and landscape architect who designed Central Park uh, and was otherwise really instrumental to the birth and development of parks across the United States. So the book shows one day in a city park where we have a diverse group of visitors, kids, adults, people of all ages, engaged in play, picnics, nature, a peace march, and more. It really honors parks and celebrates parks as inclusive, accessible spaces, uh, and shows the many ways they connect us to community and nature. The book also includes some back matter about the history of urban parks in North America. And given the bicentennial, Olmsted Bicentennial events to celebrate that are planned in many cities this spring, maybe in yours, and this book would be a fabulous resource. Next, we have Pink is for Everybody. This is by Ella Russell, illustrated by Udiana Lugo. This book is a celebration of the color pink. It's also a celebration of self-expression and acceptance that goes beyond the normal binary expectations of gender. So the story uh, opens one day with a group of kids that's stuck indoors in the rain until they discover a treasure chest that's filled with costumes that are bright pink. So they have a lot of fun dressing up as astronauts, painters, aliens, palace dwellers, all kinds of things. There's just one grumpy cat who you can see in the corner who does not like the color pink and that's okay, that's honored and accepted too. So this has a really great upbeat inclusive message about choosing what you love and also respecting the preferences of those around you. Next, I will show you Whirl by Deborah Kerbel illustrated by Jose Bizayon. This is a wordless picture book about the journey that one stray maple key or whirly gig takes on the wind. Um, we also learned recently that depending on where you live, people call it different things. So whirly gig or maple key. Readers will follow the journey of that whirly gig, um, follow its movement and see the different people whose daily lives it touches. So whether it's on a walk or in an art project, or even when it gets dropped again into the forest by a pair of birds and eventually grows into a tree. So this is a really beautiful story about the cycle of life and the connection between humans and nature. It has tons of details to explore and it's really great for supporting and developing visual literacy. 
Next up, While We Wait by Judy Ann Sadler, illustrated by Elodie Duhermeau. This is all about patience, something many kids can like, struggle with. So a boy and his grandmother are waiting for something, but we don't know what. So they pass the time singing, snacking, sitting, knitting, and waiting in a rhythmic refrain of text. They sit and knit and wait, and it's taking forever. There's a really lovely grandma-grandson relationship here and some connection to social emotional learning, self-regulation, as well as highlighting crafts like knitting. So finally, we see what they have been waiting for. Mom and dad come home from the hospital with a brand new baby and the boy and his grandma have knit the perfect gift for the new arrival. Next up, Dinosaur Dance Off. This is by Jordan Foss, illustrated by Sarah Toyerkoff. Um, this is about a dino named Darwin who loves to dance. And one fun fact, actually, um, this book was a slush pile submission that came in through the unsolicited manuscripts that we periodically review. So Darwin is looking to expand his dance troupe, but mom and dad and grandma, they're just too ancient to have any groovy moves, or are they? In a tour of dance moves from through the decades, from the cha-cha slide to the cabbage patch, this story celebrates intergenerational relationships and also the fun of a good dance party. It's awesome and I suggest you don't miss it. Next up is Free, written and illustrated by Baru. This is a picture book about problem solving and thinking outside the box. This is a bit of a more philosophical book that can be read on different levels. So when the Great Bird Circus is headed to a show, Paloma, who's a little girl, and the ringmaster are missing the proper paperwork to get their birds across the border. But thanks to Paloma's quick and creative thinking, they decide to open the cages, allowing them to surpass the bureaucracy while the birds fly freely across. This book is quirky and lovely. It's great for encouraging creative thinking um, and new perspectives. Two more books left for you. Uh, My Delicious Garden by Anne-Marie Fortin, illustrated by Julienne Castanier. This is about a girl who tends to her garden lovingly through the seasons. So the book celebrates the process and the joy of growing food from scratch, starting with planting and then planting, weeding, watering, and harvesting. It moves through each month where the girl really has the agency and the initiative over this project with just a little bit of help from her moms. The book ends with harvesting a bounty to share with friends and family and really celebrates the joy of sharing food. This is really great for introducing the idea of gardening, community gardens, or just different fruits and vegetables. I like how it shows a family in a rural environment too. Finally, uh, I saved the cutest for last. This is Busy Baby Animals. This is a board book that showcases baby animals from different species all around the world as they engage in everyday activities. We have playful text and totally adorable photos by award-winning wildlife photographer, Susie Esterhaas, that really make this one not to miss for the littlest readers. Uh, that's all for titles I wanted to share with you today, but I do wanna take just a moment to highlight a few resources and upcoming events for you. So please do visit our website, um, owlkidsbooks.com, which we recently redesigned. We have discussion guides and coloring sheets for some of the books I mentioned here. Um, those are on our resources page. We also have a front list catalog and a really fabulous new backlist catalog with books organized by topic and theme to meet any particular needs that you may have. Um, you can also find our books on NetGalley and Edelweiss too. On our site, you can sign up to receive our e-newsletter where we share books on one topical theme every week, like Earth Day, STEM, sibling relationships, global conflict, and more. Finally, uh, one last little thing, Alkids Books will be hosting two short little half-hour lunchtime panels. One is tomorrow with illustrators. One is on March 30th with authors. So if you'd like to hear more directly from some of the creators um, of the books I described here, we would love to have you. These should be lots of fun and please find us on social media for the details. Thank you for listening and have a great afternoon.
Thank you so much, Allison, and a big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones, like those you see here. Not yet a subscriber? Pair the print reading experience with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com and lock in print online, digital, and archive access by taking advantage of the special webinar offer to get Booklist for only $75. Patron-friendly, librarian approved, and free with a Booklist subscription, Booklist Reader, Booklist's new digital-only magazine, highlights diverse readers' advisory recommendations for all ages. To see and share the latest issue, visit booklistonline.com slash reader hyphen issues. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. And one more huge thank you to our panelists and our sponsors, Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing, Charles Bridge, Macmillan Children's Publishing Group, Zonder Kids, and Owl Kids. This concludes today's webinar. See you next time.